Detective Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a dark comedy thriller film called Thoroughbreds. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A strange young girl stares emotionlessly at a horse. Then, she takes out a small knife from her bag. The next day, the strange girl arrives at a large mansion where the maid welcomes her. With the maid about to fetch Lily, she tells the girl to wait. As she does, she proceeds to examine the house, down to its beautiful items and furnishings. When a mirror catches her attention, she flashes at a phony smile as practice. Afterward, she moves to the next room, where she spots an envelope with a big wad of cash. The girl takes it in her hand and ruffles through the bills before quickly returning them in place and entering another room. It looks to be someone's personal study, and she gives it the same watchful treatment while the maid continues to call Lily. The strange girl looks over at the desk and curiously eyes the photographs of a man posing next to a dead lion, then one with the same man holding a Japanese sword. Upon turning her back, she sees the same sword in the photo proudly mounted on the wall. After taking a chair and propping it against the wall, she reaches for the sword. The girl holds it by the handle and partially unsheathes the sword just enough to reveal the blade. Just then, Lily comes in, and the two of them greet each other awkwardly. Finally, the two young ladies, Amanda, and Lily, proceed to engage in a tutoring session. Amanda asks Lily how much she's charging for the session, but Lily tells her that they're just hanging out and that her idea of fun is studying. Lily begins to read a passage with Amanda looking over the booklet. While Lily is reading out loud, Amanda fixes her attention on the word horse. Finally, when it's time for Lily to read the word horse aloud, she starts feeling flustered and ashamed. Lily tries to change the subject, but Amanda dismisses the whole thing and asks if they have food. After Amanda has eaten from a bag of chips in the kitchen, they return to the room. Lily apologizes for reading the passage since Amanda's feelings on the matter may still be fresh. To this, Amanda replies that she doesn't have any feelings. Lily asks if this is a disorder, and Amanda briefly touches on how she thinks her shrink is just randomly going through the DSM-5 and throwing medications at her. Still, Amanda claims to have a perfectly healthy brain, she just needs to work harder than everyone else to be good. Just then, Lily's alarm goes off, and Amanda notes how Lily set an alarm for their supposed hangout session. Amanda then reveals that she's had access to the emails between Lily and her mother and that Amanda knows her mother's been setting up a play date for her so she could have friends. Amanda then takes her things and leaves. In their next session, Amanda remains cautious about the nature of her visits there, and she asks Lily if she and her mother had made the payment arrangements over the phone this time. Once again, Lily assures her that it isn't like that. Suddenly, Lily's stepfather Mark comes into the room looking for Lily, but he's surprised to find Amanda sitting there with her. He greets Amanda, but with his discomfort, he leaves quickly. Now that he's gone, Amanda then asks Lily if she hates her stepfather. Lily, who is still trying to get the casual tutoring session going, denies this. Still, Amanda presses on further about the matter, making Lily uncomfortable until she ends up walking away. With Amanda following her, Lily suddenly drops her polite exterior, saying that if she doesn't want to be there, then she should just ask her mom to buy her another friend. After her outburst, Lily is more surprised with herself than Amanda is. Amanda only shrugs off the comment and tells Lily that that was the most honest thing she said to her since the sixth grade. With Amanda appreciating her being forward, Lily becomes more honest with her, even telling Amanda that she's off-putting. Amanda welcomes this honest version of Lily, and the strange girl awkwardly tries to initiate a hug. The two teens grow closer, and one night, they begin to spend time together outside of the tutoring arrangements that Amanda's mother made. Together, they watch an old black and white romantic film. Amanda evaluates the woman in the film when she was fake crying, and she surprises Lily by demonstrating the technique. Lily then asks Amanda to teach her, so she instructs Lily to fool her brain into thinking she's crying. This involves manually eliciting the associated cues, starting with taking in tiny gulps of air as if you're choking yourself from the inside. Before the fake crying session could continue, Mark rudely interjects, wanting to speak with Lily in private. Lily tries to shoo him away, saying that she can't leave Amanda alone. Mark tries to make Amanda go home, but the two teens work together to win the argument against him. Defeated, the man gives up and leaves. With the two left alone, Amanda asks Lily why she hasn't told her mother about how Mark makes her feel, and Lily says that her mother doesn't really care. Just then, a buzzing sound starts going off on the second floor. Lily explains that it's Mark's ergometer machine which he uses for exercise. Later, the two teens move to the wine cellar, where Amanda presents a morbid idea, maybe Lily should just kill her stepfather. Amanda is serious about it and tackles the perspective in a practical, unfeeling manner which, in turn, makes Lily uncomfortable. Finally, 
Amanda confesses why she killed her horse. The horse was crippled, and in her mind, killing it was an act of kindness. Lily then tells Amanda to leave. Though she's genuinely confused as to why Lily is upset, Amanda complies anyway and leaves the house. As Lily prepares to go to a party during the night, she goes to visit her mother. She's just in the next room, basking in their newly acquired tanning bed. Lily then takes the car keys and heads to the party. There, she finds several people talking about Amanda and the horse that she killed. The teenagers were saying that they knew someone who had the horse photos. For fear of being ostracized, Lily pretends that she doesn't speak with Amanda. During the party, a commotion ensues when a man in a leather jacket argues with another young man who's trying to prevent his sister from hanging out with him. The man in the leather jacket is known to be a drug dealer, and he yells at the other man until he gets punched in the face. With that, he leaves. After the party, Lily returns to her car only to find the man in the leather jacket there. He introduces himself as Tim and offers Lily a roll of grass, but Lily declines. She enters her car while Tim continually talks about how she should drop out of boarding school and become an entrepreneur instead. Lily shuts the car window close and drives off. For the past couple of days, Amanda has been texting Lily, who continues to ignore her because of their last conversation. Meanwhile, Lily continues to be annoyed by her stepfather. One night, Lily could not get any sleep because of Mark's exercise machine. Something inside of her snaps, and there, she decides to speak with Amanda again. The following day, she visits Amanda's home. Amanda's mother greets her, but she initially thinks that her daughter's in trouble. Lily consoles her, saying she just wants to see her. Amanda's mother directs Lily to the backyard, where Amanda is stood still, bizarrely staring at nothing. The two of them get to talking, and later, they swim in a pool. At the pool, they try to see who can hold their breath longer. Amanda comes up after 30 seconds, and when it's Lily's turn she dives down and stays underwater until the water filled her lungs. Amanda gets her in time, just before she drowns. The two of them rest afterward, and Lily brings up Amanda's suggestion. Lily asks Amanda if they did decide to kill Mark, how would they do it without getting caught? Thinking that Lily was testing her, Amanda says that she wouldn't do something like that. Lily reassures her that she's just asking. Back at Lily's house, Mark enrolls Lily in a boarding school for girls with behavioral problems since Lily was expelled from her current school. Frustrated by this sudden decision, Lily unscrews Mark's bike, making it unstable for him to ride. Because of this, Mark gets into a biking accident where he sustains several minor injuries. That night, Lily contacts someone to get the horse photos, and when she receives them, Lily looks at the pictures with astonishment. The following day, Lily and Amanda meet up again, and Lily tells Amanda that she's seen the photos. Amanda describes how she did it. She wanted to use painless poison at first, but using it ended in a failure as the chemical impurities just led to the horse having convulsions. So instead, she clumsily used a knife, quickly slaying the horse by aiming for the head and spine. Lily interrupts Amanda, finally telling her she wants to go through with Amanda's suggestion and kill her stepfather. Amanda agrees to do it, but only if they have airtight alibis. To kick their plans off, Lily and Amanda first go to a nursing home to find the drug dealer, Tim, who works as a dishwasher there. The three of them move to the parking lot and head inside Lily's car, so Lily and Amanda can purchase some drugs. They then ask Tim if he owns a gun. Tim avoids the questions at first, but after some provocation, he admits he has one. Lily and Amanda then enlist Tim's cooperation in shooting Mark while the two of them are away. With their gunman in tow, Lily and Amanda head to the mansion. Tim is in awe of her material wealth, but he firmly believes that he'll be just as rich as her one day. There, Amanda gives him a rundown of the plan. As she does, Tim takes out his gun and fools around with it before giving it to Lily for her to hold. When Tim starts showing some hesitation toward their plan, Amanda pulls out her phone to play a recording of their earlier drug transaction. She blackmails Tim with it, threatening to send the recording to the police if he tries to quit or harm them. Frustrated, Tim tries attacking Amanda then attempts to take the phone away from her. To stop him, Lily steps in and points Tim's own gun at him. Tim gets nervous, but he calls Lily's bluff, saying she doesn't have the guts to shoot him. Just as he's directing the gun away from his head, Amanda smashes a lamp on Tim's head, knocking him unconscious. Tim wakes up in the bathtub with a head wound. Seeing that he's come to, Lily and Amanda stand over him and give him medication for his injury. The girls intend to keep Tim's gun and store it in the grill for him to use during the night of the murder. They schedule the murder in three days, making it a Saturday. Then, they explain that Lily will be on a spa trip that weekend while Amanda will be in an appointment with her psychotherapist. It's Saturday night, and Lily is preoccupied with their ongoing plan to kill her stepfather. 
To her confusion, she keeps seeing Mark's face everywhere in the spa. While she's checking out, she sees Mark again. This time, however, it isn't her imagination. Mark is still alive and well. Lily and Amanda regroup at Lily's house, and they discuss what to do next. Amanda suggests leaving Tim alone, believing that he had already fled and that he won't come after them. Determined to see her stepfather dead, Lily suggests that they should do it themselves, much to Amanda's concern. Amanda tells Lily that if they're going to do it, it will be because it's the right thing to do, not just because she's going through a passing phase. Just then, Mark drives in. Lily spots him by the window, and she pulls out a knife. Mark enters the house while Amanda hides behind the kitchen, waiting with a knife in hand. Still in the kitchen, Lily smokes a cigarette, letting Mark spot her. Mark roughly takes the cigarette away, hurting Lily, and scolds her. Still, he promises not to tell her mother since she doesn't need another thing to make her anxious. Mark's about to tell Lily that he'd know that her mother's anxious if she paid any attention, but Lily cuts him off, telling him to leave her mother. In turn, Mark calmly retorts, saying that she could never understand someone else's point of view. He even goes as far as to say that in her brain, everyone is just little offshoots of her own consciousness. People are just her maids, cleaners, trainers. With that, Mark leaves, and Amanda enters the kitchen. Lily gets upset with her for not doing anything, but she tells her that she was never upset. In fact, Amanda even thinks that Mark was right about her. Lily starts crying, and Amanda mistakenly thinks that she's just using the faking technique. Lily then asks Amanda if she was using the technique back when Lily's father died, to which Amanda says yes, the two girls are in the living room watching another old movie. Amanda is taking a sip of a drink that Lily made for her while Mark's exercise machine is droning on in the background. Lily asks Amanda about something that she said to Tim the other day, about how his life wasn't worth living. With this, she poses Amanda a question, if she doesn't even feel happiness, is her life worth living at all? The question takes Amanda aback, and she tells Lily that she's never thought about it before. When she takes another sip of her drink, Lily suddenly shouts for her to stop, admitting that she drugged it. Surprised, Amanda asks why Lily would drug her. Lily confesses that she wanted Amanda unconscious so she can stab her father to death. Then, she'll put the knife in Amanda's hand to frame her for the murder. Lily says that she decided not to go through with her plan at the last minute, but Amanda abruptly drinks the entire glass. Lily asks her why she did it, and Amanda only tells her that she lives a meaningless life. Lily tries arguing that she's a great friend, but as Amanda's slipping out of consciousness, she corrects Lily by saying she's good at imitating. Though she tries waking Amanda up at first, Lily ends up going through with the plan. She goes to the kitchen and gets a pair of rubber gloves and a knife. Amanda sleeps through the entire thing, and moments later, Lily comes back, frantic and overwhelmed, with blood in her hands and on her sweater. Lily pants and whimpers as she lathers the blood all over the still sleeping Amanda. Lily goes to leave, but as she does, she hears Amanda snoring. For one last time, Lily turns back, and she walks back to get on the couch with Amanda. She gingerly hugs her friend's arm to her body as she lies down on her lap. With the one-sided contact as her only form of comfort, Lily breaks into tears while still holding Amanda. Several months pass, and Lily finds Tim by a restaurant, parking cars as a valet. Putting the past behind her, Lily greets Tim cheerfully. Tim tells her that he heard about what happened, then asks if Amanda has spoken to her since then. Lily tells him that she hasn't spoken with Amanda, but she sent her a letter. In the letter, Amanda wrote that prison wasn't so bad. They give her food, medication, and different activities to do there. Because of the drug, Amanda finds it difficult to remember the last couple of hours leading to the murder, but she doesn't dwell on it. Thanks to the medication they're giving her, Amanda's been sleeping a lot, and she says she's had several dreams about Lily. In one of them, they were in Lily's living room, and Amanda's taking the drug drink. Lily tells her to stop, but Amanda's head suddenly turns into a horse. The other dream was about how humans would all die in the future because of their obsession with the internet, and eventually, horses will take over and run freely through the ruins of the suburbs. As she writes her letter, Amanda is shown staring at a photo of horses, and there, she forms a genuine-looking smile. Back at the parking lot, Tim asks Lily one more time what the letter said. Lily tells him that she doesn't know. She threw the letter away. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.